the power of consciousness from the people in the audience. At a certain point, I think he developed on and found out that he could use his own spiritual self to draw off the powers of the universe. And this is what happened quite often with people who are psychic and so forth. They learn, or at least they are drawing off the power of the universe, whether they're aware of it or not. Once they become aware of it, they become even much more powerful. This stems from the vast spiritual abundance of what's called original life, is what Billy calls it, Original life, that's what's responsible for life in the entire universe. Original life is the phrase he uses that refers to the original life force that started the, the uh, universe that we live in. This mysterious original life personifies the breath of life which universally gives life to everything in the universe. It's in, it's in you. That's your life force that keeps you going. Your spiritual self is attached to that force and can be called upon for strength. It can be used for strength of character. It can be used to develop some of our more uh, uh, you know, famous New Age ideas like telekinetic energies and levitation, uh, telepathy. But most importantly, it gives you force of self, strength of conviction, self-reliance, confidence, abilities to see into the future, ability to always tap into the subconscious self. Imagine the ability at any given time to use your spirit to tap into a knowledge bank or a consciousness in the Akashic Records to know the answers to things at all times. Sometimes channelers tell us that they're hooked to a great knowledgeable being somewhere where information is just flowing into them. Now, as you know, I don't believe in channeling. I think it's the wrong way to actually use the mind. I believe the channeling is nothing more than euphoric meditation gone bad, that a person's own persona creates these things. Where I've seen some channelers, though, they get back on track and actually develop their spirit to the point where they use the spiritual we form that the Pleiadians talk about, that power of your spiritual self, which really is connected to the creation and the consciousness of the universe. It can also be used at all times to kind of keep an open line to the Akashic Records. After a certain period of development of meditation, it's possible to have that line open all the time where you can call upon information from the Akashic or higher life forces to give you advice about perhaps most anything that you would want to know. Imagine being able to go through life and never really face a difficult problem because everything seems easy to you. It always goes your way. Well, certainly that can be developed. The force of your spirit can become so strong that you are always lucky. The force of your spirit can be developed so strong that you always have the ability to keep an open channel to a larger consciousness in the universe. That is certainly possible. Many people do it with nothing more than thinking properly, thinking in a balanced state of mind, and always thinking with the idea of a mind that they're doing things for the right reasons. Integrity of thought brings it forward. So, this mysterious original life that Billy's calling out here, this life force, that's part of the secret of creation. This is the part of thing man may never fully understand exactly how the creation operates, but now we know that it is there. We know there is a spirit, a spiritual self there, and we're beginning to find out we're connected to it. And as you practice your exercises of meditation and meditation immersion, you too will feel it. You'll find it in yourself, your connection to it, and then there will be this great feeling of fulfillment and happiness to know that you really are a spiritual being and that you are connected to something much larger and greater than the simple material existence or the environment that you live in. Next thing I'd like to touch on, and something you've got to spend a little time dwelling on, is how we make ourselves sick through wrong thinking. Perhaps you've heard of late in the past few years, more and more people have come across the idea that how we think actually affects our body. Many doctors are getting on to that. I want to uh, point out one little thing to you here for you to think about uh, along these lines. If we allow ourselves to think improperly, we react to things with rage, anger, depression, and so forth. If we get ourselves out of control, let's say you're in a situation somewhere and something happens and it touches part of you that causes rage and anger and you want to strike out somehow and you feel suddenly the urge to either defend yourself in a situation or you feel such hate and anger you might actually pick up something and throw something at somebody. 
Now, of course, I'm only talking about individuals here which are prone to getting out of control, but we seem to have more and more of those in our society these days. But I use that as an example because I want to point out what happens inside the individual when that happens. While we're in these states of excitement, we promote an overstimulation of the adrenal glands. These are lo located right over the kidneys. Sometimes we call these the crazy glands. They discharge kind of a digestive matter and overflow the blood with the fighting strength and invigorating chemicals whenever the human prepares himself for some sort of alteration and you need extra strength. So adrenaline pumps into the blood and gets you going, but adrenaline is normally neutralized then you know, when the anger calms down and you're trying to get yourself back together, well, there's kind of a calming uh, acid solution, a milky acid solution that comes out from the muscles of the body. It soothes us and calms us down. But quite often it's not enough, and there's an extra adrenaline that's left in the body that causes, like, aggressiveness and this readiness to fight where you just can't calm down. Well, because normally the body is prepared for you to get a little angry and aggressive sometimes so it can normally secrete these little this milky solution which will calm you down but if you get too far out of control my point is there's too much adrenaline in your blood and you can't calm it down and it has an effect then okay this can create illness adrenaline is only neutralized then when the anger or the fighting is over whatever is calling them and then if this calming effect isn't strong enough, it lingers on in the body. What actually happens is that in your, if your inner life, your inside self, your psyche, is living in such an uproar with anger and in turmoil, the muscles are unable to discharge enough of this milky uh, acid solution uh, to smooth out the human. The extra adrenaline cause aggressiveness. You had this tendency to fight. This has an adverse effect on us. It makes sometimes it'll make your stomach even contract. Your intestines and other organs and nerves have a uh, disquieting effect inside and start reacting to all this uh, extra adrenaline that's in your body. It causes a number of ailments. It'll cause nervous trembling. If you've ever even been like in a, a fist fight or something and got pushed into it somehow or whatever, you find yourself just trembling and out of control, that's what's going on. Headaches, dizzy spells, liver, kidney ailments, gallbladder problems. You can, it can cause digestive troubles, ulcers, constipation, diarrhea, any number of sort of things. My point is that when we find ourselves living out of balance, not living spiritually, allowing ourselves to get carried away because of material aggression, problems, hate, anger, and so forth, that chemically we actually do damage our body. That since there, are not, there is not enough calming acid secreted by the muscles, the extra adrenaline left over in the body gets into the blood and causes slowly these build-up, these ailments. And for a person who regularly gets angry or hostile or violent, something like that, they're going to get sick. These are not going to be happy, long-living people. So it should be obvious that to avoid these many kinds of illnesses, we need to learn to control our thinking so we don't get in caught up in these moods. A person who lives a spiritual life would never happen to. They would walk away from any situation like that, or they can very calmly look at a situation. Professional people learn this. If you find somebody in the professional walks of life who is continuously in front of the public or in dealing with crowds of different types and so forth, they learn to listen to information and let it kind of bounce off of them. They see it just exactly for what it is. I'm reminded of Ross Perot once, and he was on a Peter Jennings show, and he was attacked by several members of the audience with some very irrational statements that were obviously only being said out of hate and anger to try to hurt his feelings and make him look bad on television. Peter Jennings, which I thought was interesting, seems to allow this and even uh, chose the people that said it. So it doesn't say much for him either. But all this hate and anger was directed at Ross Perot. Well, being ever bit the mature, developed individual, uh, he did not react to it in anger. He